Welcome to episode 101 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we continue the saga of Fritayoff, where Fritayoff travels to Baldur's Cove to see Ingeborg and find out how he should best seek for her hand in marriage and her brother Helga's reaction in chapters 8 and 9 of Fritayoff goes to Ingeborg. Chapter 8. Friteoff Goes to Ingeborg When the sun had sunk low in the west, Friteoff said to Bjorn, Let us away, for this night I must speak with Ingeborg. How, cried his friend, wouldst thou violate Baldur's Grove? Surely twill be no violation of Baldur's sanctuary if I do but seek in all honour and propriety to hold converse with the king's daughter, my playfellow and companion from our infancy. Bjorn said no more. Ida soon brought them to the holy grove, one side of which was bounded by the sea. By that way it was forbidden to enter under penalty of death while from the land none but the priests might grant entrance through the door in the high wall to those wishing to visit the grove and temple. Paying no heed to the prohibition, Fritea boldly entered the grove from the shore and suddenly appeared before Ingeborg to her mingled joy and terror. Fear not, dear Ingeborg, he cried, clasping her hand, that my presence here will profane Baldur's sanctuary. Nay, Rather let us go into the temple and implore his aid and guidance. In silence, the lovers entered the temple, and not till the dawn began to break did they emerge and seek the shore once more. Now have we plighted our troth before the gentle God, said Fritea, and our love for each other shall therefore be publicly made known. Thereupon the maiden besought Fritayoff to forget what had passed and be reconciled to her brother. "'Thy words accord with that which Baldur hath implanted in my breast, fair maid,' replied Fritayoff. "'Wherefore I will appear at the ting, and before all men offer to thy brother Helga the hand of peace. Soon shalt thou hear thereof.' And with these words they parted. Chapter 9 The Parting off the next day did Ingeborg turn her footsteps toward the sea, and at last, as she neared the wooded shore once more, the sails of the swiftly approaching dragon glimmered through the branches of the trees. It stopped, and Fritayoff leaped lightly ashore. "'Welcome indeed, thou Fritayoff,' said Ingeborg, "'but woe is me, I read my fate upon thy brow.' Seest thou not also blood-red runes thereon bespeaking insult, shame, and banishment? Nay, calm thyself, and tell me quickly what has passed. Learn then, my Ingeborg, the disgrace that I am forced to bear. I sought the assembly of the people gathered at thy father's grave mound, where close circling stood the Northland warriors, sword and hand and shield to shield, Within the ranks upon the judgment seat sat that pale bloodman Helga, his gloomy gaze fast fixed upon the ground, while beside him Halfton, like some overgrown child, toyed idly with a slender sword. Then I stepped forth and spoke, The clouds of war, O Helga, hang overhang thy boundaries. Thy kingdom is in jeopardy. But give me thy sister, and I'll lend my arm. Whose strength shall stand thee well in time of need? Forgotten be our grudge, for loath am I to cherish hate against the brother of my Ingeborg. Be just, O king, and save at once thy country and thy sister's heart. As proof of faith I offer thee my hand in peace. But by the mighty Thor I swear that never again shall it be stretched to thee in reconcilement. Loud Platelets rang from all about us. The clang of a thousand shields rose up to the heaven. Yea, give him Ingeborg, they shouted. The fairest lily in our veils. Remember, king, that Fritayoff is our stoutest swordsman. Give him thy sister. That, our noble foster father, Hilding, stepped from out the throng and spoke for me. 
from his lips fell many a weighty speech and biting proverb, while even Hafton did, too, urge consent. But vain were my words, vain the shouts of the warriors, vain the intercession of Hilding and Hafton, as little might that spring sun coax a blade of grass from out the naked rock of our united prayers awake one kindly thought in Helga's breast, and changed his lowering glance as scornfully he spoke. <laughs> the peasant's son might claim perchance, our sister, but never shall the defiler of a temple win her hand. Speak, Friteaf, hast thou not broken Baldur's peace? Hast thou not forced thy way into his holy temple, despite the laws which so forbids? Answer yea or nay. My life's happiness, I answered, hangs upon a word. Yet fear not, Helga, neither for Valhalla's joy, nor all his earth's delights, would I forswear myself. Yea, in Baldur's temple I have seen thy sister, but in no wise did I offend the pure and gentle God. Our prayers to him did waken holy thoughts within our hearts, and led me here to offer peace to thee. More, I could not speak, for the murmur of horror ran through the circle. The warriors, paled by superstition, drew back from me as if I were smitten with a plague. Thy brother's was the victory. At last he spoke. By the laws of our fathers, mine is the right to sentence thee to banishment or death. But rather would I emulate in mildness that God, whose sanctuary thou hast violated, hearken then to my decree. Far to the west lies a group of islands ruled by Angontir. King Bela long did lay upon him tribute, and this he faithfully remitted so long as our royal father was alive. Since Bela's death he has refused it. Go thou and collect his tribute as atonement for thy crime. Then, he added sneeringly, "'Tis said this Angontir is hard-handed, and sits brooding o'er his gold like Fafnir, the famed dragon slain by Sigurd. But who could withstand our second Sigurd's prowess? Truly, this is far other work than seeking maids in Baldur's holy grove. Here, till the summer comes again, we'll wait for thy return, bringing fresh glory, and above all else, the tribute. But shouldst thou fail in this, thou shalt be doomed as coward, branded, and banished from thy native land. So ended his words. The assembly was dissolved, and the warriors dispersed in silence. But what is now thy purpose, Friteaf? Have I a choice? This very day I depart to redeem my honor, and leave me here? Nay, come with me, my Ingeborg. <laughs> Alas, that may not be. Yet hear me, beloved, ere thou dost fix thy firm resolve. Thy brother in his wisdom forgets that Angontir was once my father's friend as well as Bella's. Perchance he'll yield with good will what I ask. But should he not, this friend I carry at my side shall prove a sharp and powerful persuader. Then I will send to King Helga the gold he so desireth, and free us both for ever from the sacrificial knife of that crowned hypocrite. Then we may... Ingeborg, we will seek some distant, happier land, and bid farewell to shores so hostile to our happiness. Look, my Yulida doth already spread her eagle's wings to bear us swiftly o'er the waves. Come, beloved, haste thee. Alas, I cannot follow. What hinders thee, my Ingeborg? Were thy good father but alive, and did he forget not Friteaf? that Hilga holds my father's place with me. The gods have blessed and woven these bonds, and a woman dare not break them to steal her happiness, however near it lies. Once more consider, is this word thy last? Alas, 
dear Friteoff, I cannot, dare not do else, if I would maintain my honor and thy own. Then fare thee well, King Helga's sister, fare thee well. Oh, Friteoff, Friteoff, is it thus thou wouldst depart without a glance, without a hand clasp for thy childhood's friend? Methinks one who is forced to sacrifice as much as I doth well deserve at least a word of comfort. The stir of life and clash of arms will ease thy grief, but what remains for me? To whom, alas, may I impart my woe? Within my bower I'll sit, thinking of thee, and weaving broken lilies in my web, till spring herself with fairy lilies shall adorn my grave. Cease, cease, cries Friteoff, with deep emotion, as he clasped the maiden's hand. Forgive me that my sorrow did assume the garb of anger. Thou art right. I see it now, my better angel. Tis true that only noble minds can teach us what is noble, and thy pure heart was quicker far to see the right than mine. Alone I'll go and part from thee, but never from my hope would e'er be tied. Next spring shall Helga see me here again, the crime with which he charges me atoned. Then, in full circle of the warriors, mid glittering steel, will I demand thee from thy brother as my wife. Till then, farewell, and keep me ever in thy thoughts. In memory of our childhood's love, take thou this arm ring, a treasured heirloom of my father's house. All the wonders of the heavens are carved upon it, but the world's best wonder is a faithful heart. See how it gleams on thy white arm like a glowworm upon a lily stem. Thus they parted, and Ulita bore the hero swiftly away, while Ingeborg, sad and hopeless, betook to her bower. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey. <laughs>